Bordeaux, Bourgogne, Beaujolais. If you're a wine lover, you've probably heard of these fine wines. They're one of the symbols of French culture, celebrated worldwide. Yet over the past 60 years, wine consumption has dropped by 70% in France. Reds in particular have been given the cold shoulder, even abroad. It's such a shame because in the end, we're losing a lifetime of work. We've been fighting to restore Bordeaux's reputation for 20 years, but we're failing. Why are consumers changing their habits? How can winemakers in southwestern France survive? Some are forced to tear up their vineyards and seek compensation from the French government and the EU. We have to rip up some vines. We're okay with that in Bordeaux, but we really need to find new customers. Otherwise, we'll go from 750,000 hectares down to maybe 400,000. Eric Etienne has been a winemaker in Bordeaux for four generations. His great-grandmother started working these vineyards. Today, Eric, his wife and his brother all produce wine on this estate. But the next generation isn't interested in the family legacy. We have the same problem. Neither my son nor his children, who are younger, are willing to take over, given the economic situation. At 60 years old, Eric could potentially retire. But the current economic crisis makes it difficult for him to sell his 80 hectares of land. We're talking about a thousand euros a barrel in production costs, knowing that today my average selling price for the 2022 harvest is around 850 euros a barrel. All you have to do is subtract and you'll see I'm losing 150 euros on a barrel of wine. Eric sells at a loss, if he can even sell at all. The winemaker lost his main client earlier this year a supermarket that suddenly put an end to 20 years of close collaboration. Eric now has no other choice but to find a plan B, namely to sell his grape juice to merchants who will then turn it into wine. We pick the grapes, press them, and two days later we have the grape juice. It gives us some quick cash flow because it's sold very quickly and we need space in the winery because we're overstocked with wine sales being so low. This is the first year I've really started selling grape juice. Instead of letting his unsold wine go to waste, Eric has decided to send his tanks to a distillery where the wine is heated and turned into pure alcohol. In exchange, he gets some financial aid from France and the European Union. This is a flawless wine, which has been lately oaked for a 2021 bottle. This 2021 vintage won a gold medal in Bordeaux and a gold medal in Lyon. This wine is going to be distilled, so it's going to be used either in the pharmaceutical and perfume industries or to make bioethanol. Eric holds this particular wine dear to his heart. He named it after his granddaughter, Jade, born three years ago. We work hard for nothing. We built a heritage, a nest egg for our retirement, but now we have nothing left. It's worthless. Honestly, it's heartbreaking. Global red wine consumption has plummeted by 20% over the past five years. As a result, prices have tumbled. In response to the problem of overproduction, France and the EU have come up with a destructive solution. Uprooting vines in exchange for money and allowing growers like Eric to repurpose his land. Salut Eric, ça va? Eric and Didier have known each other for years. They're both part of the VT33 collective that brings together around a thousand winemakers.
This plot is 35 years old. Eric plans to remove this plot. Today, the economic situation is such that we feel sick to our stomachs, so it'll almost be a relief. It's heartbreaking for everyone to pull out the vines because generations have worked hard to pass on this heritage. Unfortunately, we don't make a living from our profession. The collective has been fighting for 20 years, 20 years to try and restore Bordeaux's image, but we just can't do it. Our leaders have been in place for 20 years. Today, it's still the same people who can't come to terms with the fact that they couldn't do anything. They won't accept the fact that they're, well, I won't say incapable, but powerless. It's a shame. Bernard Farge is one of the industry leaders, and he refuses to take the blame. For him, events like COVID, Donald Trump's tax on French wine, or the war in Ukraine, were impossible to predict. It's not the industry's fault, because no one could see this coming. I don't think we could have anticipated that it would be this bad. What we're missing are the right tools. It's a shame to use distillation, but you can't blame a profession with or without its elected representatives for a drop in consumption and the crisis in Ukraine. It would be a serious mistake to think that our problems can only be solved internally. Bernard Farge believes one of the solutions would be to find new buyers elsewhere. In recent years, wine drinking habits have changed drastically. Fewer families dine together, people eat less red meat, and younger generations are paying more attention to their health and to the environment. People want to know where the product comes from, especially how was the wine made? What are we actually drinking? Well, we're drinking wine, of course. Wine is fermented grapes, but there's more to a bottle of wine. There are what we call inputs, and I feel that young people and consumers in general are looking out for these inputs, which can be linked to the use of pesticides, petrochemicals, and phytosanitary products in the vineyard and in the winery. The entire industry is changing. At the French Wine and Vine Institute, Engineers are looking for alternatives to sulfites. They're widely used by winemakers to stabilize the drink. But young consumers are not so keen. When we add sulfites to grape juice, to wine, it eliminates some of the yeast and bacteria that could potentially alter the quality of the wine. Therefore, we will add other selected yeast to limit this development. So we'll try to find a biological solution in sulfite-free or low-sulfite processes. But eliminating sulfites is a challenge. Onology and everything we've learned about wine was done with the use of sulfites. So if we want to get rid of sulfites, onology as a whole needs to be reinvented. And it's all the more complicated in an increasingly warm environment. Climate change leads to wines that are generally less acidic, and as a result, eliminating sulfites is a bit more difficult because wines with lower acidity are more susceptible to microbial alterations and therefore preservation problems. At 40 years old, Mathieu Verdier is part of Bordeaux's younger generation of winemakers. He experienced his first grape harvest with his father as a child. Today, despite his unwavering dedication, the reality is bitter. First of all, production is challenging under the weather conditions we're currently facing. Second, it's tough from a commercial standpoint because we see that the markets are saturated. So we struggle to sell wine that is already difficult to produce. Being a winemaker is tough, it's a thankless job. Mathieu found his escape hatch here, just a few hundred meters from the family estate. The view of the vineyard and the Garonne River is breathtaking. In 
In 2015, he decided to build his cabin and sell his wines here. Opening our doors allows us to show people that Bordeaux is not just about glitz and glamour, not just about the Grand Château. It's also about simplicity. People who visit realize that we are just like them, running small-scale farms. We are simple people and they can easily identify with our wines. He also had to learn how to appeal to younger customers. We can't deny that beer is making up more and more of the new generation's alcohol consumption. But we try to make wines that are adapted to their tastes, rounder, fruitier and easier to drink when young. A few years ago, Mathieu and his friends challenged themselves to clink glasses while surfing on the Garonne River. They shared the video on social media, a smart marketing move, but of course, not enough to sell thousands of bottles. The winemaker knows that if he wants to keep toasting to success, he has to innovate and adapt constantly.